What if the sky itself had once turned against us? Imagine an era when the magnetic shield that guards our planet collapsed to a mere tenth of its strength, and the northern lights danced not just in the Arctic, but across the skies of Africa. This is no science fiction. It happened around 41,000 years ago during a cataclysmic event known as the La Chance Excursion. According to a just-released new study, for 2,000 years, Earth's magnetic field faltered and its poles wandered, creating a cosmic storm of charged particles, radiation, and glowing auroras across continents. This invisible upheaval may have reshaped human evolution, driven Neanderthals to extinction, and changed the fate of every living creature on Earth. To understand the magnitude of this event, we must first grasp the importance of Earth's magnetic field. Generated by turbulent flows within the planet's molten outer core, the magnetic field acts as a shield, deflecting solar winds and cosmic rays. It stabilizes the upper atmosphere, preserves the ozone layer, and ensures that life on Earth isn't scorched by radiation from space. But this system isn't constant. Earth's magnetic field has reversed many times over its history, flipping poles in events that unfold over thousands of years. Shorter, more violent deviations are known as excursions, and the La Chance event was the most dramatic excursion in the past 100,000 years. The story begins around 42,000 years ago, in a world already teetering on change. Neanderthals still roamed Europe, but anatomically modern humans were on the move, advancing with new technologies and behaviours. The La Chance excursion did not flip the magnetic poles entirely, but caused the dipole component of Earth's magnetic field to collapse to just 10% of its normal strength. What replaced it was a chaotic mess, a multipolar field resembling the magnetic configurations of gas giants like Neptune, with multiple poles appearing and vanishing across the globe. This was not merely an abstract geophysical shift. It had dramatic consequences for the space environment around Earth and critically for life below. The world was turned upside down, at least magnetically speaking. Around 41,500 years ago, the North Pole wandered down to New York, then across North America to Oregon, then zoomed south through the Pacific Ocean really fast to Antarctica and stayed there for about 400 years, and then shot back north across the Indian Ocean, back up to the North Pole. The period between 40,900 and 40,500 years ago, which aligns closely with the peak of radiation exposure, also marks the final disappearance of Neanderthals in Europe. While multiple factors contributed to their extinction, increased environmental stress, genetic damage from radiation exposure, and competition with Homo sapiens may have accelerated their decline. As discussed, one of the most significant findings of this research is the increased radiation exposure that the Earth experienced during this period. The weakening of the Earth's magnetic field to as low as 0% to 6% of its current strength during the transition phase and about 28% during the reversed phase allowed significantly more cosmic and solar radiation to penetrate the atmosphere. This resulted in a sharp increase in cosmogenic isotope production particularly beryllium-10 and carbon-14, which serve as markers of past cosmic radiation levels. The study identifies peaks in these isotopes from Greenland and Antarctic ice cores, indicating a substantial surge in high-energy cosmic radiation reaching the Earth's surface. Cosmic rays are high-energy particles that originate from outer space and travel through the universe at nearly the speed of light. These energetic particles can come from a variety of sources, including the sun, distant supernovae, black holes, and even unknown astrophysical phenomena. When cosmic rays reach Earth's atmosphere, they interact with air molecules, creating a cascade of secondary particles that can have significant effects on our atmosphere, climate, and even biological organisms. Cosmic rays are generally classified into two main categories, galactic cosmic rays originating from outside our solar system, primarily from distant supernova explosions and other extreme astrophysical events. These are the most common type of cosmic rays and contribute to background radiation on Earth. Solar cosmic rays ejected by the Sun, especially during solar flares and coronal mass ejections, less energetic than galactic cosmic rays, but can cause short-term radiation spikes, 
These are also known as solar energetic particles and can affect satellites, astronauts, and high-altitude aircraft. A smaller but still significant category includes extragalactic cosmic rays, which are believed to originate from even more distant astrophysical sources like active galactic nuclei or gamma-ray bursts. High-energy cosmic rays can damage DNA and cells, leading to increased mutation rates. This has implications for genetic evolution, species adaptation, and potential extinctions. Some studies suggest that past radiation spikes from cosmic rays may have influenced mass extinctions and evolutionary transitions. However, during periods of weak solar activity, known as grand solar minima, during geomagnetic reversals, cosmic rays can penetrate much deeper into the atmosphere, increasing radiation levels on Earth. The weakening of Earth's magnetic field during the Lachance excursion, combined with grand solar minima, resulted in a tenfold reduction in the cosmic ray cutoff, allowing far more high-energy cosmic rays to reach Earth's atmosphere than under normal conditions. This dramatic increase in cosmic ray penetration had profound atmospheric, climatic, biological and evolutionary consequences. The world under the Lachamp event was one of dramatic celestial phenomena. With the Earth's magnetic field weakened, the auroras, normally confined to the polar regions, extended to the equator, illuminating the night skies of Europe and Asia with dazzling, eerie displays of red, green, and violet lights. To the Neanderthal and Denisovan, these lights would have been a terrifying sight, an otherworldly phenomenon that they could neither explain nor control. During strong solar storms, intense radiation bursts would have ionized the upper atmosphere, causing dramatic electrical disturbances. In some instances, humans might have witnessed glowing air, much like modern auroras, but appearing in unusual locations, even during daylight hours. The skies may have shimmered with diffuse glows, strange flickering lights, or unusual halos around the sun, phenomena recorded in historical accounts during geomagnetic storms in later human history. For the first time, scientists have reconstructed the magnetospheric system during the Lachon using advanced 3D numerical models. These simulations reveal that the magnetosphere, the protective bubble that normally extends 60,000 to 70,000 kilometers into space, was compressed to a fraction of its usual size. At its lowest point, the dayside boundary of the shield was just 15,000 kilometers above Earth's surface. This allowed energetic particles from the sun and deep space to penetrate deeper into the atmosphere than at any other point in human history. One of the most visually striking consequences of this magnetic collapse was the expansion and the wandering of the auroral oval. Normally confined to high latitudes, the aurora is generated when charged particles collide with Earth's atmosphere, creating shimmering curtains of light. But as the magnetic poles shifted and weakened, the auroras moved south, painting the skies above Europe, Africa, Australia and the Middle East in vivid light. What must it have been like for ancient humans to see these otherworldly phenomena, night after night, in places where the stars had always ruled alone? The transformation of the magnetosphere also triggered a surge of cosmic radiation into the atmosphere. Without the magnetic field shielding, solar energetic particles and galactic cosmic rays reached lower latitudes with ease. This had cascading effects. Atmospheric ionization levels rose dramatically, likely altering weather patterns and atmospheric chemistry. The ozone layer, which protects the planet from harmful ultraviolet radiation, may have thinned or developed regional holes. And on the ground, UV radiation levels soared, especially in regions directly under expanded zones of open magnetic field lines. As mentioned, one of the key amplifiers of this radiation increase was a series of prolonged grand solar minima, which are extended periods of low solar activity when the sun produces fewer sunspots and emits less solar wind. The reduced solar wind weakens the heliosphere, the sun's protective magnetic bubble that shields Earth from galactic cosmic rays, allowing even more radiation to reach the planet. The study identifies a series of grand solar minima spanning the period from approximately 42,400 to 41,100 years ago, with several individual minima occurring within this window. The most significant of these grand solar minima were centered around 42,300 years ago, 
and 41,800 years ago, a 500-year period which coincided with the weakest phases of Earth's magnetic field. The scenario for the Lachance excursion, combined with Grand Solar Minima, showed greatly amplified impacts, most notably during the winter months, December to February. In addition, there would have been repeated periods of Grand Solar Minima, each a duration of 40 to 140 years. Studies have indicated that magnetic field strength approaches zero during Grand Solar Minima, and the cosmic ray intensity at Earth then approximates the interstellar value found in space. The two most intense Grand Solar Minima occurred during the latter part of the La Chambre event. Assuming the Sun was in an active phase between all the Grand Solar Minima, contemporary observations suggest that within that cumulative total 500-year period, there may have been a total of 180 events. In addition, there is the potential for super-solar energetic particle events, which may have caused short-term UV spikes far beyond normal levels. The consequences of this increased radiation exposure were profound. The influx of cosmic rays dramatically heightened atmospheric ionization, leading to the increased production of nitrogen and hydrogen oxides. These reactive compounds contributed to the destruction of stratospheric ozone, reducing its concentration by as much as 5% globally. With less ozone to absorb ultraviolet radiation, surface UV levels rose by 10-15% to 15 above current values, with short-lived spikes that could have reached even higher levels during periods of intense solar flare events. The combination of increased UV exposure and reduced atmospheric shielding would have posed a significant risk to both terrestrial and marine life, potentially causing genetic mutations. The increased radiation also had climatic repercussions, particularly in altering global atmospheric circulation patterns. The weakened ozone layer changed the temperature gradient between the equator and the poles, disrupting wind patterns and weakening the Arctic polar vortex. This led to a period of climatic instability, with increased aridification in some regions, extreme rainfall in some places, glacial expansion in others, and continent-wide shifts in weather patterns. In summary, the study presents compelling evidence that the Lachance excursion and the associated Adams transitional geomagnetic event were a major turning point in Earth's environmental and evolutionary history. The combined effects of a weakened geomagnetic field and a prolonged period of low solar activity led to a surge in radiation levels, ozone depletion, climate shifts, and widespread ecological changes. These findings highlight the importance of Earth's magnetic field in shielding life from cosmic radiation and suggest that similar events in the geological past may have had profound impacts on evolution, climate and extinction patterns. It is here, at the intersection of geophysics and anthropology, that the story becomes especially compelling. The La Chance event coincided not only with geomagnetic turmoil, but also with key moments in human evolution. Around the same time, the Neanderthals disappeared from the fossil record. The earliest representational cave art appears. And across Europe, the Aurignacian culture, marked by tailored clothing, musical instruments and symbolic expression, began to spread. Coincidence? Perhaps not. The Lachance excursion offers a rare natural experiment, a window into what happens when Earth's magnetic shield fails, it reminds us that the planet's magnetic field is not immutable. It waxes and wanes, pulses and pivots, governed by the hidden movements of iron deep beneath our feet. And when it changes, the consequences ripple from the edge of space to the depths of the human soul. So the next time the northern lights flare unexpectedly over a low-latitude city, consider that it might be more than a beautiful spectacle. It could be a whisper from the Earth's core a harbinger of change, and a reminder that our world, for all its technological mastery, still dances to the rhythm of forces beyond our control. From the perspective of ancient hunter-gatherers watching strange lights dance in the sky while shielding their skin with ochre, to modern scientists modelling the magnetic field with supercomputers, the La Chance event unites past and present in one of the most dramatic cosmic events to shape human destiny. What stories did they tell under the glowing sky? 
What myths were born as streaks of light traced across the heavens, leaving an imprint not only on the Earth's surface but in the human mind?